All right, all right. Let's get it going this morning. Good morning, Cyber Friends. This is the Midi Man coming at you again from Walker's Music. Well, yet <clears throat> another word for the day. Sunday morning edition, and uh, we uh, give God all the praise and the glory and the honor. We give Him, we give Him all of it because we, we dare not take in and glorify ourselves. And we just want to say good morning to each and every one of you, Cyber Friends. You know who you are. I have decided that I was going to start a new thing this morning, and um, when I was uh, when I was at uh, Minister Music at uh, Piney Grove, my former thirty third Sunday Church, I was also a Sunday school teacher, and I uh, taught Sunday school, and uh, so I decided that I would uh, start doing a. Sunday school teaching version online on a third Sunday. For right now, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to do it every Sunday, but at least on a third Sunday, and and holding the tradition of what I used to do when I was teaching, when I was playing at Piney Grove, I'm going to do a third Sunday Sunday school teaching online, which is the day marked the first day of it, November 20, 2016. So we just want to say that everybody just bear with old Mitty Man and we hope that this could be something that you can get something out of. It's called Sunday School with the Mitty Man and I'm going to use, I'm going to use my, uh, my, my Sunday School book from my home church, which is The Pathway. In other words, I think you can see that, The Pathway. I'm going to use that book to do the teaching online. And so what we want to do, we want to, like I said, we thank God for each and every one of you and we want to get right into the meat of the word this morning and uh i'm gonna have to use my little helpers here over here i'm gonna i'm gonna have to use that and um to help me see a little bit in other words and uh we are in lesson 12 today november 20 2016 uh unit three alpha and omega in other words and the topic today is life and healing the devotional reading comes from Psalm 46. Background scripture comes from Revelation 22, 1 through 7. And the print passages of the same, Revelation 22, 1 through 7. The key verse says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Revelation 21 and 22 and 1, King James Version. First of all, people, let us... Let us pause right here and let's get some things straight. Now, in the book of Revelation, you got a lot of symbolic language. But now, we are not going to assume anything. I want the online class to understand that. We're not going to assume anything, but we're going to read the word of God. And we're going to let the scripture interpret itself. Now, our topic said life and healing. Well, now, John was given this heavenly vision. And he was in heaven. He was in he was in the by and by. He was in the sweet by and by. In other words, he was seeing things as we are yet to see them. And so the key verse says, He showed me. Meaning who? Who was this showing this to 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 John? Well, if you look and read the book of Revelation, you see that it said that it was the angel of Jesus that was showing John and giving John the, this revelation. Now that's what the, the certain things said, but in, in many many said that it was Jesus Himself that was giving John this revelation. But the book is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John, which John, his disciple John, John the Beloved. So now, first of all, I'm not going to do this here in the normal contemporary way that I would normally do it when when I was teaching inside the church but seeing just an online version we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it in a in a decent time frame we don't want to make it the video too long we see god's provision here for his people that's the first outline of the day god provision for his people you see first of all we already know if we go back to the book of genesis god has always from the very beginning, was a provider. He provided Adam's provisions straight up from the get-go. 
He had made everything beautiful in his time. And matter of fact, God created all things. And he said, after he created these things, he said, Lo, it was good and very good. He made everything right and ready for Adam. And before he even made Adam, everything was prepared. The only thing that Adam did not have was a suitable mate for himself, which God added later, the woman, which was also Adam. You see, we were male and female, but they both were Adam. I, that's another Bible study there. I, I, I can't explain that in this his Sunday school lesson this morning. But at any rate, let us read. Let us read. Let us read these first three verses here. He said, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Now, okay, people, let's look at that. The river of the water of life flowed through the midst, in the middle of the street, down the midst of the street. Meaning what? Everybody got access. See, see, God just want to get, want us to have everything, and He wants us to have everything, even in this by and by, in the here and now. He made it so accessible. In other words, now the, the scripture said as far as our Sunday school lesson tells this morning, that could have been symbolic, because they say in the in the New Jerusalem. That was going to be the throne. Under the throne, it was going to flow water, that water of life, and it was going to make the Dead Sea. It was going to flow out to the Dead Sea and run, go into the Jordan, down to the Dead Sea, and that water was going to, was going to cure the Dead Sea in the millennium. Now, that's what we are looking forward to. And it says here that this tree of life bear 12 amount of fruit. I mean, 12 different kinds of fruit. And it did it every month, people. That was a productive tree. But guess what? This was the same tree that was in the Garden of Eden. Oh, yes, sir. This was the same tree that was in the Garden of Eden. God had made everything. And then he said, the fruit. Now, you just think, man, all right, 12 kinds of fruit. Now, remember now, what we, a lot of us think fruit only means something that's sweet. But remember, a tomato is a fruit. A cucumber is a fruit, but a lot of people think that they are vegetables, but they are not. They are fruit. So we got 12 manner of different fruit on this tree that it's going to bear, and it's going to bear every month. I mean, don't you see the unlimited supply that God, God is a God of abundance. He don't, God is not a God of just enough and a little bit. He's a God of abundance. This tree is going to bear 12 kinds of fruit every month, not just once a year like our trees do now. They only bear once a year. But this tree going to bear the fruit, 12 different kinds, not one, but 12, and it's going to do it once a month. And it said that the, the, the leaves on the tree is for the healing of the nation. Now, you know there's no sickness in heaven, so this got to mean something else. There's no sickness in heaven, so it's not that type of healing. What this meaning, according to our lesson this morning, this meaning that, let me go on and make sure I can read it. Got to have, have a little help. I never thought that day I would have to do this, but nevertheless, we, we don't, we, it's a lot of things that we have to do that now that we didn't have to do in the past. Sin cut Adam and Eve off from the tree of life in Eden. But in the New Jerusalem, the tree's fruit will be available to all. In addition to the fruit, the tree leaves will have therapeutic or health-giving qualities. Since there will be no sickness, that can be this can be seen as symbolically providing a source of continual health and strength, enriching life in the new Jerusalem. God will restore in the new Jerusalem what was lost in the Garden of Eden. Amen. People, I tell you the truth. How can not one serve a God that is always looking out for our best interest? That's what the leaves of the tree is for. Not that nobody, we will need any healing there because there's no sickness in heaven. But this is in the New Jerusalem, this symbolic of that our continual health and strength is going to be continual. It's going to be everlasting and just uh, what, what we call ongoing. 
it's, it's just going to be ongoing. The, the leaves on the trees that's going to just automatically keep us healthy. When we eat the fruit thereof and drink the water of the river of life, I mean, it's just a continue. And all of this is in the new Jerusalem. Remember, John saw the new Jerusalem descending out of heaven to the earth. This was after the 1,000 years reign of Christ. Now, I want to pause. I want to pause here, and I want to give my opinion. I want y'all to hear me now. This is what I believe. You know, there's a lot of speculation. Some say that this earth is going to be dormant for a thousand years. You got some teachers, especially of the Seventh-day Adventists, they believe that this earth is going to be an abyss. It's going to be completely void for a thousand years. And Satan, this is going to be Satan's prison, which is going to be a prison to him because he will have no one. He will have no one to inhabit. He will have no one to, to, to tempt and anything. It's going to be an abyss for 1,000 years. Now, that's what a lot of the Seventh-day Adventists believe. And then I thought about that, and I can, I can see some sense in that all as well. But I thought about that. This y'all sober now. If this going, earth is going to be void for a thousand years with nothing here, and they calling that the millennial, well, how could that be a millennial reign of Christ? If Christ was supposed to be ruling and reigning from the present day Jerusalem, and he's going to be with the saints, and we're going to be with him, and we're going to rule and reign for a thousand years, and after the coming back of the battle of Armageddon, when he's going to wipe out the Antichrist and his prophets and whatnot, and all them armies that's coming against Israel, and, and Jesus is going to wipe them out just like that. But how is it then, if Jesus is going to set up an earthly kingdom and rule for a thousand years from Jerusalem, how can that be? How could this earth be void in an abyss as the, the seven-day Adventist thing? Now, mind you, I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just reading the Bible. How can if Jesus rule on the earth, there wouldn't be nobody here? Don't make sense. Don't make sense. So I'm just giving y'all this here to think about and, and study it and research it for yourself. And use the Bible now. Okay, somebody's going to be here in order for Christ to rule here with us. We'll be here. So if there would be nobody else here to rule, what, what, kind, of, what kind of kingdom would that be? So we got we 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 don't know like the Bible said we know right now in part, but then we'll know in full. However, God decided He's gonna do this thing is really up to Him anyway. But just rest assured that we got a brighter day coming. Just this, just reading this, and the, and God's relationship to His people. Let's read. Let's read on. Uh, I want to try to read these here few verses here. As you look at the, the relationship that God is going to have to his people. L listen at this here. All right. And he said, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and there they need no need of the candle, nor light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So just telling us, uh, brothers and sisters, that during this time, there will be no need for our present day sun in our solar system. We won't need that sun. God and the Lamb is the light. And we're going to be, we are his servant. We will serve him. And it said that our, God's name is going to be in our forehead. Now, people. I believe that's symbolic. I don't believe we're going to walk around with uh, something written on our forehead. But what I believe that might could be, perhaps, symbolically, because uh, we're going to have the Lord God shall always be on our mind. You see, this is what I believe is going to happen soon on this earth when they talk about the mark of the beast, where it's going to be in your forehead and in your hand. Well, what do we do with our hands? We work with our hands. We create and we make things. We don't create. We uh, we 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 uh, we work with our hands. We make things with our hands. And we with our forehead. What what's up there? That's our brain, our mind. We think. 
So, in other words, whatever you think about and you keep your mind on all the time, that's your servant. In other words, this is what I believe that mark of the beast is going to be something similar to this. This is what we're speaking of this morning. God's name is going to be in our forehead. Well, let's think about something. Then it said we're going to have crowns. We're going to, be, we're going to all receive crowns. Well, that could be like an insignia. In the military, we wore insignia. Now, and I can look at your insignia and tell exactly what you are in the military. I can tell exactly your your your, your campaign that you have been in, in in wartime or conflict time or whatever. I can tell by looking at your insignia. This is the same way I believe this is talking about when our status in, in the new kingdom, in the new Jerusalem, that we are going to be known. Could, perhaps it could be the crown that's on our head. It'll be on your forehead. In the name of God, you you understand what I'm saying? And God will be on our minds continue. I'm just saying this. Think about it. I'm not trying to say this because I do not know this for certain. But I'm just saying I'm just I'm imagining in, in my mind that this could perhaps be what this here thing is about God being name being written in our foreheads, in our mind, in our thoughts. And this is the way I believe that this Antichrist that soon to come on the planet. Soon to come on the world scene, I believe it's closer than ever. That this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be a mind thing, and it's going to be a free will thing. No one goes to hell blindfolded, people. People are going to willingly take that mark. Those that take that mark are going to willfully take it. In other words, if Satan deceive you into taking it, it wouldn't be legit. We are going to, those of us that are going to accept that mark, we're going to do it free willingly. Because, like I said, if it wasn't free will, it wouldn't. If he did it by deception, if he deceived many man into doing it, then it wouldn't be legit. God could not punish me for that because I was deceived in doing it. But when you free will him to do it, just like the Adam and Eve did in the garden, they knew that God told them not to eat of that fruit. And even then, Adam, God, God never gave the woman the command. He gave the commandment to the man, but the woman was deceived. But just as he was, the woman was deceived, Adam wasn't. Adam freely ate it because his wife gave it to him. And he knew what God had said. So it was free will, people. And it's always going to be about free will. So that's our relationship to God and his people. And what is his promise? So we're going to read the last two verses. Let me go and put my help on him. It said, and, the, and he said unto me, who? John. These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servant the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Amen. Amen. I, I know I have did a, a con condensed version of the Sunday school lesson this morning, but that, my cyber friends, is what I'm going to try to be doing from henceforth until Jesus come, or I depart, whichever come first. And that's what I will be doing on third Sundays from, from henceforth, as far as I can do it, if the Lord say so. And it said, God's promise to his people, we got a brighter day coming, people. We got a brighter day ahead. He said, blessed is he to keep the prophecy and the sayings of this year, this year uh, book and the prophecy that are written in. So it's a blessing for you to even read the book of Revelation. So I... My challenge to y'all today, like I said, this was a condensed version of the Sunday School lesson that is for today, November 20th, 2016. I wished I could do the whole thing the way I want to do it online, but for right now, the Lord is just not telling me to do it. But I did a condensed version. That those of you that might get a chance to see it, you would still have a little understanding of what the, the lesson is about today. And it's about the New Jerusalem. It's about the water of life and the tree of life and about our relationship to God, the way it's going to be. It's going to be better than anything. In other words, it's going to be the Garden of Eden restored. God never meant for all this stuff to go on, people. God never meant for us to be in a cursed earth. We are in a cursed earth right now because of what Adam did. But, oh, what Jesus did reversed the curse. And one day, when all sin be put to an end and death be destroyed, we're going to be restored back to our status as we were, Adam and Eve were, in the Garden of Eden. That's where it's going to be in the New Jerusalem is yet to come. 
the new Jerusalem going to come down, people. And God going to dwell with us right here on this planet, right on this earth. Now, a lot of people tell you, this earth going to be destroyed. No, 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 no. This earth going to be renovated by fire. God going to clean it up. It won't be no more of this hell. I, behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yes, John did see a new heaven and a new earth because what he meant was, and this is what I believe, and this is what I believe, people. Now, you judge it for yourself and read the Bible. This is an earth without end. Amen. It's an earth without end. But what John saw was a very a version of the earth after God cleaned it up. God going to clean this mess up and restore it back to the Adam days, back to when in the beginning, the Garden of Eden. It was Adam's job from the beginning to make this whole world a Eden. But Adam failed. But where Adam failed, our Savior Jesus, he didn't fail. So, but it's just in the future. It's in the future. This whole world is going to be a paradise. And God going to dwell right with man. Just, you know what? It's always have been God's intention to be with us. And y'all, guess what? It finally going to happen. All we got to do is just be patient, just a little while longer. Hold on, saint, for the king is coming. This is me, man, saying whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God ain't in it, get out of it because it's going to come to nothing. This is Sunday School with the Midi Man. Peace.